Hi, I'm Tracy Pierce. Thanks for joining me for this series of free animal communications. So today I'm going to be talking with uh, a wild deer. This is a deer that um, kind of hangs out around the area where one of my friends lives and she, she sent me this image. So I'm going to talk to this wild deer here. Let me pull up its picture and just see what this deer would like to share with us today. It's not the, not the best picture, but this is something I've found with the wild animals lately is um, sometimes it is harder, especially if you're just using a cell phone camera or something to, to capture them. What I do when I'm looking for animals to interview is like I'll be walking around the neighborhood or lately I've just been around my neighborhood because of the coronavirus lockdown shelter in place stuff that's happening here in the US. But I'm just holding this question really, like holding it up to um, the divine or holding it at a frequency that I feel like the animals might be able to catch it. And just like, are there any animals that would like to share their wisdom with the world that would like to do a little conversation with me here and to interact and I've asked some of my friends to do the same and so my, one of my friends sent me this picture here of this deer and it, it's funny I had only intended to do maybe once a week these interview sessions with the wild animals but I'm having a lot more animals show up lately so uh, it might be a little more frequent here we'll see but let's go ahead and I'm just going to get quiet and start tuning into this deer and see what it might like to share with us today. So I feel this softness and this gentleness come forward. And I feel like this, this deer is showing me that it's female and it's showing also like with the snow where my friend lives is more up in the mountains. So they tend to get more snow than where, where I live, but the deer is showing this difference between like, okay, so there's the snow on the ground, but there's actually spring is starting to come forward. And she's showing it's almost like the positioning of her in this particular picture she's even saying is it's like I'm sitting on the threshold of winter and spring. There's a sense of but she's showing like like up in the mountains there is like there are still places that have snow on them. Um, she's showing the areas that she wanders around. Yeah, it's at least it's at least a thousand feet higher elevation. She's showing than where I live, and that things are just starting to turn over is how she's showing it. Like we're at this threshold of winter and spring, and yeah, she's almost showing it. It's like like winter and summer are the the solid months somehow like those are cold or they're hot and then she's showing spring itself as being kind of a, a transition period so winter transitioning into summer <clears throat> and she's showing you know have this really great appreciation for thresholds and this crossing over um, time. There's a lot that can... Yeah, she's saying it's like sometimes you get the best of both worlds, like um, when you're in that threshold period time, like you get the good things about winter and sometimes you get the good things about summer. Yeah, so this deer is saying so it feels quite young, actually, it feels like um, it's not more than a year or two old. And this deer like it was it definitely felt like it was alive a year ago this time. And she's showing like this was my spring is my favorite kind of season so far, she says. 
Do you want to say anything more about that? No, I think I got my point across. So, um, little dear friend, it seemed like um, Kim said that you, it seemed like you might have other wisdom to share with us today. And as a reminder to people who might be joining me either on Facebook or Zoom, if you're on Facebook and you're joining me live and you have questions, you can type them into the comment section. And if you're joining me on Zoom and you have a question, there should be a little box on the bottom that says chat. Just click on that and type in your questions if you have a question for this deer. Hmm. So, dear, is there anything that you want us to know about you or your species or what's happening for you in the world today? What do you feel like you would like to share with us about you? She's saying that deer have a lot to do with, with softness and gentleness and... Um, She's, it's funny, sometimes animals, it feels like they read something about me first and then they kind of reflect it back to me and I'm getting that sense too. Like last week we talked to a robin and showing this wildness of the robin. <clears throat> and how, the, yeah, the robin really brought up this softness piece as well, this gentleness piece and talked about the medicine like from a more maybe shamanistic point of view and it's almost like the deer is kind of directing me to showing what it represents in a bigger way like its archetype and she's saying like this softness and gentleness is really a big part of what they hold that anytime you see a deer there's this invitation to pause and really take in their their gentleness take in their softness yeah this this deer is saying anytime you see a deer it is a, in, a, in her opinion it is a a sign from the world or the universe or god or however you think of it to pause for a moment yeah she's showing like um I don't know, we see this a lot here in Colorado where, you know, there's wildlife crossing the highway and cars slowing for it. She's saying, like, we really do bring this, it's not slowness, but there's a softness and a gentleness that we really want to bring. And sometimes people are so struck by it that they just, they, they feel like they have to slow down and stop. Um, little dear, do you have any advice or other words of wisdom you might want to share with the humans today? She showed me something about um, death, actually. So there's this sense, she's like, we know we are prey animals. And, you know, she shows hunters hunting them like human hunters, but there's also, you know, threats from other predators that live up in the mountains. And there's this, it's not like they're resigned to their death. Like, but they're, they're aware that they could really die at any moment, she says. Being a prey animal, there's a level of always being on alert, she says. So it's interesting because she's showing me laying down, like she is in this picture, her laying down and there's the softness and the gentleness energy around her but she's also it's almost like 
you know, the, the saying like your mom hasn't has eyes in the back of her head. It's that kind of thing where um, it's not exactly physical vision, but it's like awareness. They're able to spread their awareness around them. So there's a way of being soft and gentle, but also being alert. And this deer is telling me this is a very good lesson for me, me personally, Tracy. Um, yeah, she's telling me like so there's this belief in me that maybe I need to always be protecting myself or putting up a boundary and not and and holding that harshness or kind of that rigidity of a boundary without with letting go of the softness and the gentleness that's there. And this deer is like showing how those two things can kind of be coexisting. Yeah, the steer is saying that we, we're very aware of how close we are to death at any given moment, but that doesn't keep us from living. It doesn't, you know, we don't go into a depression or, or something like that, like maybe humans do. Is there something that, you know, there are a lot of depressed um, humans out there who, who is, is, do you have any advice for them? Or is it a matter of, of being in this softness and gentleness or? Well, she says it has to do with not losing hope. Okay, do you have suggestions about how we might be able to do that? You know, sometimes it's hard to keep hope when, you know, things are crashing down around us. Hmm. So what she's showing is, it almost feels like, like a fusing together of all the deer in the world, kind of. And it's like holding this greater view, like, okay, so I see myself as an individual deer, this deer is saying, but the hope that I feel is for like more of a global, um, <clears throat> global, um, hope for the global species of deer. And so that's what she's encouraging us is like, okay, maybe we're not, we're not individual humans. Is there a way I can feel um, hope for this greater group of humans, like feeling yourself as a part of something bigger. Okay, I think I understand what you're saying. Um, you know, I know for me, sometimes it's hard to have hope for humans, like seeing some of the things we're doing. Um, do you feel like there's a certain way we can look at the human race so we would maybe have more hope for them? I mean, I Sometimes I do feel like that hope just fall away or fade away. Do you have a way that, or advice how we might be able to, to tap into that? So what the deer is pointing to is, there is this sort of angelic part of being human. She's showing, okay, so we have, the, we have this animal body down here that it's almost like this angelic spirit falls into. And <clears throat> yeah, so she's showing, like, she says animals have spirits too. It, it's kind of different from the humans though. It's, it, and Animals are able, able to keep their connection to the divine a lot more easily than humans, um, just the way, so she's showing like the way the human, these angelic spirits fall through the space ethers, or I don't know how you want to describe it, fall through the ethers as it's coming to incarnate in this animal body. And it's like the animal body then forgets about this angelic spirit part. And this deer says it doesn't happen in the same way in the animal kingdom. Like we're able to feel still our, our spiritual part and our, our animal in a different way than humans are. She shows how like 
there's this angel animal integration problem she says in humans and the way to get back to the place of hope she says is to keep tuning into the angelic part the part of the part of you that knows it's angelic and can feel that that's how you get back to the hope she says oh wow that's that's really beautiful thank you i'm checking to see if we have any um questions i'm seeing any pop up here so dear this time is really for you and for you to share whatever you might like to share with us is there anything else that you might like to share with us today So she keeps expanding on this thing that she was just talking about before, about the angelic part coming into the human. And what she's showing is, is once our animal bodies down here on earth, remember that we have this angelic part, that she's showing like this straight kind of line coming out of the top of a human's head that it's like connected to the angelic part, your higher self, the divine, however you conceptualize that, connected to a higher part that's more than just your animal body down here. And that becomes a way that like the divine or your higher self, again, like can pour this light of the angels basically is how she's showing it into you. So it comes down and it spreads out um, is able to spread out to other humans, to other life forms, to the earth itself. There's a real way of, yeah, once you're connected to this angelic part, there's a way for you to spread your hope and light uh, to the rest of humanity. And this deer says that it's the lack of hope, like a greater level of hope, like it's more than just I hope I'll be able to pay my bills or I hope I'll be able to take care of all the down here things that, that we need to, but it's like a hope of, a hope of evolution of humanity is what this deer is saying. And once one person is connected to it, they have the, the power or the ability to spread that same kind of energy to everybody else. Oh, that's incredibly beautiful. Thank you so much. Oh, the dear. Nancy says, thank you. This is exactly what I needed to hear today. Yes, thank you, dear. It's really, really incredible the way you've described that for us. So we've got just a couple minutes left. Um, dear friend, is there anything else that you would like to share with us today before we close the space? Yeah, she's saying, I want to come back to this angelic piece again. And one of the reasons she says that so many humans are drawn to animals, whether it's watching animals on TV or going outdoors and seeing them or having their own pets, is because of the way animals are able to connect with this more angelic part of themselves or to remember themselves as a, a spiritual or energetic being like we, we know that we are more than just our physical bodies and the deer is saying that's one of the reasons human are humans are so drawn to have interactions with other animals because it reminds them it reminds them of their their higher self it reminds them of this angelic part of themselves and she really likes and wants to encourage humans to continue to have interactions with um, animals, non-human animals. It's really important, she says. Thank you so much, Miss Deer. It was, it was so beautiful, beautiful to hear from you today. So thank you so much for everyone who joined me here and any of our viewers who are watching later. It's been really fun and such a pleasure for me to connect with these animals and relay their messages that they have to the world. So. Um, Check out my YouTube channel for more of these videos. I've done, I think, at least 30, if not 40 
interviews so far with animals and they've had a lot of really interesting things to say. And I plan to keep doing these for a while. The animals are talking in my ear and they really want me to keep doing this. So I'll be doing this for a while. If you have any wild animals that are, that are showing up for you that you think might really like to, to share their message, send me an email and we'll see what we can do. But again, thanks again for joining me here today. And until next time, take care and be well.